Welcome to Coffee with the Journalist, a podcast featuring the tech industry's most well-known tech journalists. We uncover the real person behind the real stories you love to read. We discuss their beat and news coverage, what their inbox looks like, and a whole lot more. I'm Jared Martin, the co-founder and chief operations officer at One Pitch. Our host for the show is Beck Bamberger, the co-founder of One Pitch, CEO of BAM Communications, and a current journalist. On today's show, we're joined by Alex Heath, reporter at The Information. Alex gives us an inside look into the unique stories written at The Information, his advice for PR pros, his advice for those pursuing a journalism career, and more. Let's listen to today's episode with Alex and Beck now. Hi, everyone. Today we have on Coffee with the Journalists, Alex Heath, who is a reporter over at The Information, a fabulous newer media outlet, by the way, if you're not following it. Previously, he was at Business Insider and also Cheddar Inc., also based previously out of New York City. But now, Alex, you're in Los Angeles. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. This is fun. This is fun. Now that we figured out our technical problems, it, it, we're all good. Yeah. We're all good. Yeah, we're good. Are you, um, it's, it's Friday afternoon, by the way, just to let people know, are you drinking coffee? Are you drinking anything? What's happening? Oh, I'm, I'm, um, uh, I'm committing a sin. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm drinking a, uh, a Spindrift, uh, sparkling water, uh, okay. orange flavored. Um, yeah, I had coffee earlier in the day and, you know, when you're in quarantine, uh, as we are right now, it's you, it's easy to just like lose track of how much coffee you've had. So I'm trying to limit myself. <laughs> smart, smart. Do you normally start with just in the morning, or do you drink it all day if you ha- if you could? Uh, it depends on how much sleep I get, but I definitely do a couple like cold brews or regular coffee in the morning, and then one in the afternoon usually. At one in the afternoon. Oh, I can, I have a strict nothing after like one p.m. or I will be up. That's probably smart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, as you know, we have you on just as, as we say, coffee with the journalist, but usually it's been frankly, any other drink besides coffee, <laughs> but that's okay. I want to dive into, to get rolling here, just what it takes for you to craft a good story. You write specifically about often about Facebook and all the shenanigans going over there. So there's a lot of probably deep reporting that happens there, but what does it take for you to craft a piece? And you can maybe reference a a recent piece if you want on like how that story came to be, but we like to know what does it take to make an actual story, get it printed and up online? Yeah. I mean, for those who aren't familiar with the information, we have actually a pretty unique approach. Um, I mean, I don't know how unique it is, but we, we have a very high bar for um, exclusive content and stories um, for our full stories. We have another product called Briefing that's more of a daily kind of our take on the news of the day. Um, so obviously, we don't break all of that ourselves. But for our stories, there's a relatively high either original you know, info or original take um, or um, you know, an ex- exclusive interview or something kind of bar to meet. Um, so that's the starting point is, you know, is what I have either a scoop or, um, an original smart take on something that no one has done, something that will make people readers think differently, um, about whatever the topic is. So that's, that's really the starting point. And then from there, it's all the normal stuff that every journalist will tell you just is there tension? Is there an interesting character? Is there, you know, for us usually, is there an interest, interesting business angle, um, or, you know, we do lighter stuff as well. Like we had a great story today about like etiquette in the age of, of Zoom <laughs> virtual hangouts um, and like all the weird things people do and like the weird uh, snafus people get in like on Zoom calls. Um, so there's, we, we, we are a little flexible, but I tend to do more of the business type stories. So yeah. um, that's kind of where I start always. Yeah. Zoe Bernard wrote that piece today. I saw that. It was Yeah. Yeah. You're definitely seeing a lot of dogs and babies and animals in this day and age on yeah. the Zoom environment. So, yeah. And actually, you know, it would probably be helpful because you guys are a newer outlet. Could you give it more of an overview on further what you guys are covering? Obviously, it's in-depth journalism, exclusive coverage. People should know. But maybe for pitching purposes, what further should people know? Yeah. I mean, for pitching, it's kind of interesting. I would encourage people to be creative because we don't do a lot of, Mm -hmm. uh, we don't do a lot of stories that originated with pitches. We don't do many embargoes, um, Mm -hmm. because either, unless they're given to us exclusively. And even then it's, you know, if it's interesting to us, but 
Yeah, I mean, the information, we're, we're an outlet that's been around for several years. I don't know off the top of my head how many, I think seven or seven, seven ish years. Um, we have a newsroom of between 20 and 30 journalists, um, and we all cover Silicon Valley, the tech industry, the media industry, basically all, all the industries that are being disrupted by technology. And we have a bureau in Hong Kong, we have teams in New York, San Francisco, I'm in LA, my editor is in Seattle. We're all kind of spread out um, and we have, you know, we cover all the big companies and then we cover a lot of venture capital, a lot of startups, um, a lot of like funding type stuff. And I, I cover Facebook as my main company and then everything that is around it. So Twitter, Snap, mm-hmm. um, TikTok increasingly, et cetera. So yeah. um, it's a fun beat and we all have really fun beats, um, but that's kind of the gist. And then we have products, you know, we're a subscription only publication. Um, Yep. And, you know, so we, we have products around that as well. We do calls for subscribers where you can talk to us and talk to experts we bring on to calls. Um, and we do things like org charts where we, you know, report um, the inner machinations of a company yes. and, and its org structure based on, you know, company documents and talking to sources and stuff. Um uh, which I recently got funded as its own company as an idea, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, wow. I shouldn't even say the name because they stole our idea, but um, <laughs> uh, it's one of our most popular products. Um, and we have like a Slack community and a bunch of other stuff like that. Um, and we're really just about like catering to what our subscribers want. Yeah. And uh, so that in one correction, just, I said like, oh, a newer publication, but yeah, you've been around seven years, so that's not too new, but I have well, to say. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's still new in terms of, you know, the journal has been around for how long, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. What I have to say, though, that I think is so distinct and why, you know, you guys are flourishing, if I may say, versus some other more outlets that can't pivot is just what you were mentioning, like this org chart, those p- specific calls, the community that you can get involved with. Obviously, there's events and those are those are changing stuff. But even courses I'm seeing in the, like the projects, I mean, it's it's in depth. So if anyone's listening right now, who's, who's not familiar, just to look and see, like, look at that org chart. There are 40 something companies that all the biggest ones, you can get really quality information that is fantastic on here. So I'm a big fan. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) So what you were saying, Alex, specifically, as it just relates to, you know, pitching is that, you know, really, if it's not an exclusive, and it's not something meaty, forget it, because that's probably not something you guys are ever covering. Yeah, but I would also, and I'm sure this is a common refrain on this podcast, is like, I would also encourage PR people to not think purely transactionally in terms of like, pitch equals story that I'm trying to pitch. Like, there's been plenty of times where I'm like, look, I'm not going to do a full story on this. But if I'm ever doing a story that is, you know, touches on this, or that like your founder would be interesting to talk to Mm -hmm. for or something like let's stay in touch. Mm -hmm. Um, Very rarely are you going to just get like a full blown information story out of your one single pitch. I mean, even like, you know, like Facebook, like, I don't write about half the stuff they send me just because like, it's not um, exclusive to us. You know, so it's not, it's not like a, because we're snotty. It's just like, it's our model. It's what people pay us for. They pay us for exclusive information. So if we're writing something that Mm -hmm. you're sending elsewhere, um, it kind of defeats the purpose for us. Yeah. So since you have, and this is unique to a couple of folks we've had on this particular podcast where, you know, they are assigned to a company or a few companies, big giant ones with thousands of employees, all that stuff. So do you then have an established good deep relationships with the comms people there? How do you kind of navigate that? And do you have some kind of insiders or what do you basically do? Because someone who isn't in the orb of these big companies that you are covering pretty frequently probably isn't going to be able to give much value for their little startup that just got a series A funding or something like that. What would you say just in in regard to the relationships that these bigger uh, entities you cover? Yeah, I mean, relationships with the bigger companies take a lot of time. I've been covering Facebook um, since pre-2015. I think I started around 2014. Um, like, And I'm, when I say cover, I mean like my main focus. Um, so yeah. I've been like, I've watched the PR department at Facebook change over several times as they've watched me change jobs. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now I have a lot of relationships Um there that are just the product of having covered the company for so long. Um, but mm-hmm. I'm very sympathetic to reporters who have to start. And especially now, like 
these companies, these large companies there, I think Facebook has like 300 ish PR people. Um, and then they also have agencies and everything else. So yeah. you just got to know the right folks. And of course you also talk to executives and former employees and current employees all, I try to go all up and down the food chain. Um, mm -hmm. and that takes time and it's like, you have to be at a place that, uh, um, 300 Alex. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, uh, oh. I saw some crazy stat. I can't remember where, so I probably shouldn't repeat it, but just how there's like so many PR people per journalist nowadays. It's like six PR people to each working journalist yeah. in yeah. the US or something. Oh, I thought it was higher than that. I was going to say like 15, but it might be yeah. higher. Um, certainly feels higher, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Now, you know, I, I, you'd have to ask them, obviously, but I've established a rapport with all the Facebook folks where they all know me and the executives know me and, and all that. And yeah. that comes like, I'm fortunate to have worked at places that every step of the way, you know, I've, I've been covering Facebook through a few jobs. And like each time I was given the rope and the um, freedom to report and to make these relationships and to invest in them and to go visit, you know, Facebook's campus. And that's also my encouragement to people is like find outlets that are willing to like, let you leave your desk and go do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Speaking of leaving your desk, as it relates to just your phone and how you're on the go and maybe not at this current time, but in the midst of the Facebook uh, empire of sorts, what is your just inbox look like if you're maybe out on the prowl, you're on campus with folks at Facebook, are you spending a lot of time in your inbox at all? Are you, are you inundated with pitches? I'm not inundated with pitches um, because I don't know. I, maybe a lot of folks already understand that now about the information that like you're, you're kind of wasting your time most of the time. Mm -hmm. I do get stuff that it's like, Oh, that's maybe I'll talk to that person one day when I'm working on a story about that, but I'm, I'm always working on something and I'm pretty heads down on it. So I don't really have bandwidth to like, I'm not just usually waiting in my inbox for like a story to arrive in my inbox. You know, that's mm -hmm. like, I don't find that's, that's how the best stories happen. I, that that's like 1% of the time. So mm -hmm. I, yeah, I mean, my inbox is a mix of PR people that I have relationships with that understand kind of how I work and um, what the relationship is like. Um, but it's mostly like emails with colleagues, emails with the companies I cover. And like, you caught me on a Friday. So I have actually cleared out a lot of my inbox. I try, I, I'm really bad at getting through my inbox during the week, because I'm usually like on deadline or trying to like confirm a tip or something. And I just like put blinders on and like ignore my inbox. And so Friday mornings, my day to like kind of sift through everything. So we're Friday afternoon. So I've actually only got like eight oh. emails right now. And they're all like from colleagues or just like things I need to respond to. Um, but, you know, it certainly is a lot different, like on a Wednesday <laughs> uh, and have about 52 newsletters that I need to skim that I haven't gotten to read this week because I published three stories this week. But um, yeah, 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 you've been busy. So you have an interesting cycle. A lot of there's some folks we talk to and, you know, they just let it ride. There's like 42,000 emails in there. Some are like adamant like deleters like get it to zero i can even tell you yeah and then you so you kind of have like the cachet like well, let's get to friday then you're going to clear it out get to zero <laughs> that seems very manageable. do you ever file stuff how do you kind of manage yeah oh maybe that's someone i want to talk to in four weeks or something uh yeah i i i have an email app that i just like i i tell things to come back in my inbox and like whenever I think it's relevant. Um, oh, there you go. And I am an inbox zero person. Um, so yeah, by, by the weekend, I try to be as close to zero as I can. Um, but I'm current, I'm currently like, just while we're on the topic of inboxes, I'm currently in this like newsletter overload thing where yeah. I have, a, I, I know all these great reporters who do all these great newsletters and I subscribe to them all. And it's like, I don't know which ones to unsubscribe for, but like it's Friday. I'm looking at 42 newsletters in my inbox that, all from this week that I already skimmed, I already probably read 26 or so yesterday. And I'm like, I, I want to read all these. I love all these people. I think they're all interesting and have interesting insights, but I'm like, I can't, I just, yeah. I can't do, I can't read all this. So like, that's, I'm in, I'm in this like weird thing where I just am in the newsletter overload, but that's a whole nother topic. <sighs> yeah. And there seem to be a lot of freaking emails, email, you know, newsletters yeah. from all our, our favorite people, et cetera. But like, yeah, how do you go through all of them? Yeah. But anyway, that's, that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> you, are the, you are the first person to mention just the overload of the newsletters. And 
you you know you know these people these are your colleagues in the respective industry you're in yeah. so like you want to acknowledge them and read them and all that stuff but yeah there's a lot of them now my goodness yeah there is and you know it's in, it's like podcasts it's just this you know Cambrian explosion of of content um, and you know we have, we have, we've had a newsletter a daily newsletter for since we started you know since the information started and that's like the crux of it's like our daily briefing that subscribers love but it's just been interesting to watch how like individual journalists have gone out and made their own newsletters on top of their full you know day jobs and I'm like I'm trying to think of like how I would make time to do a newsletter like some of these I read and I I admire admire the heck out of it I just it's it's amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, the bandwidth for folks to come up. I well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if they have an inbox to zero though. I'll tell you that. So maybe they're interested people on the other side. Well, let's play a very short word association game. Just the first thing that pops into your mind, Alex. Just like hand it to us, <laughs> and let's see let's see what we get. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. First, a couple easy ones like food. What would you say for food? Uh, I would say sushi because that's what I had last night. Ooh, drink. Uh, I would say margarita because that's what I want to have tonight. <laughs> Ooh, I like it. <laughs> Hobby. Catan. I'm a huge sellers of Catan fan. You have the interesting first three words of this a game before. <laughs> okay. It's going to get more complicated. Okay. Facebook. Oh gosh. Um, nuanced. Libra. The Facebook one. Yeah. Um, embattled. Mm. That's, that's a cop out, but yeah. How about Google. Hmm. Esoteric. Ooh. Ouch. Ooh, this is good. This is good. New York City. <sighs> Crowded. Los Angeles. Sunny. It is. Isn't that great? Twitter. Right now, trouble. Mm. Social media. I would say I would say nuanced again. Mm-hmm. Journalism. Exciting. Pitch. Uh, <laughs> uh I would I would say unfortunately distraction Mm -hmm. and then inbox stress stress but you got it to zero yeah but the god it's i know i know i shouldn't i'm looking at my newsletter tab though oh that's that's the stress that's the yeah yeah i don't know what to do with that (laughs) that's true okay what besides the newsletters alex what do you read what do i read um so i i read all our competitors so um that would be like, you know, the journal does incredible business tech coverage, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. Bloomberg, the FT, um, I've been checking out Protocol lately. They recently yeah. launched. They're an interesting outlet. Um, mm-hmm. I read, uh, and, you know, honestly, like the stuff that I, you know, like get a lot of value out of it are is some of these newsletters. Like um, my friend Casey Newton at The Verge, he does a great newsletter mm-hmm. um, about social media that is great. Uh, it helps me keep up with things that I've missed throughout the day. Um, same with like a friend, Dylan Byers from NBC. He has a great media uh, and tech newsletter um, called Byers Market. I read some of the Axios newsletters. Sarah Fisher at Axios is, is a wonderful human being. I would say that's the general, yeah, those, so like the Bloomberg FT journal and then those newsletters. Do you ever just read long form, like books, fiction, nonfiction, anything? You know, I really wish I read more books. I feel like I read a book a day in terms of like article intake. Um, I uh-huh. I do love to stumble across like a great like like there's a Kanye West profile in oh, the SJ magazine. I know which that, you're that I'm going to read this weekend. Was that not? You haven't read it yet. Oh, it's fantastic. I haven't read it yet. Um, yeah, and like obviously, like whenever I get like a juicy New Yorker long read, yeah. it's interesting to me. I'll jump into that. Um, the Atlantic has been doing great, like COVID nineteen coverage. Yeah, and you know I'm a like avid pocket um, this like save it later service reader. Uh, so I just have like probably hundreds of things in my pocket that I'll never get to, but I would love to read. Um, and in terms of books. Um, Unfortunately, I really only have time to read books for work right now. I'm hoping that changes. But I, I, I was doing a lot of coverage a couple months ago on Facebook's hardware efforts. Uh-huh. And um, I read a book called The History of the Future um, by Blake J. Harris that is all about virtual reality mm-hmm. um, and that whole the Oculus, uh, you know, Facebook's um, VR company, that acquisition and kind of the crazy history of the founders there and how they got kicked out and all that. Mm-hmm. I read that a couple months ago. I'm excited to read um, 
Sarah Fryer from Bloomberg. She has a book called uh, No Filter that's about Instagram that I have here on my desk that I'm excited to read. Oh, I haven't read that yet. And uh, also I'm excited to read Stephen Levy's um, book about Facebook that came out recently. Mm -hmm. And the last like non-Facebook business book that just rocked me was obviously um, Bad Blood by John Kerry about Theranos. I read that last summer. Oh, I could not put it down. Could not yeah. put it down. That that kind of leads to this next prompt we always ask is just about the future of journalism. And one thing that's been coming up on some of these conversations is reporters following the beat and the immense industry knowledge that they have or specific company knowledge that they have are coming out with really just fantastic, even bestseller books and books that are voraciously read and even expanding into more of the you know, beyond tech as, as tech, you know, just consumes our everyday life and such. So what do you think the future of journalism is? And do you think perhaps that there is a space for journalists to become the, the kind of a rising cultural icon, if you will, in, in just longer form literature? Yeah. I mean, definitely in longer form, I think like there's an, inc- an incredible appetite for interesting business, you know, books that also have like a cultural element to them. And these tech companies are pop culture. So there's a lot there to explore and mine. I guess with like future of journalism, it's it's not so much the future and that it's already happening, but I think it will just continue to be more so. It's just, you know, the rise of the paywall. And I understand that I have a, you know, bias working at a, at a subscription outlet, but, you know, you're seeing it like all original reporting is being thrown behind a paywall. Um, you know, my first like New York media job was at Business Insider and I was there when we first started trying, you know, they tried the paywall and now it's working really well for them and pretty much all their original reporting is now behind a paywall. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that happened, you know, a couple of years ago and I think every single outlet that does, you know, that invests in investigative or just like not pure aggregation um is going to just have a paywall if they don't already. And really pretty much all of them do. And I don't know what that means because I guess in the short term, it means like you have to pay for quality information and Mm -hmm. we may have like a a quality information deficit there for a while for people who either don't want to pay, don't see the value in it or can't afford it. And I don't know how that will shake out, but it's certainly the future of the ad model. I think especially now, you know, I've been doing some reporting on just what, the current economic downturn from the pan, you know, the pandemic is doing to the ad market. And I think you're going to see a real just um, demolishment of a lot of outlets. There's, there were several big layoffs today at a bunch of ad supported media companies. Um, mm-hmm. Just the ad models not working for a lot of folks, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be, you know, and then, and then journalists themselves going out and doing their own individual things with their that are you know subscription um you know like a friend of mine um polina who polina. used to write the term the term sheet newsletter i think she's been on this show before right um oh, she has been. She's great. i'm a big fan yeah yeah um she just left fortune to do her own newsletter um full time yeah. and yeah. I think you're going to be seeing more and more of that. You're going to see like, you know, rising or, you know, already established prominent journalists in their respective fields, just going, you know, I can do this on my own yeah, and going to do it. I'm, I'm not saying I'm going to do that. I, uh, I'm in a different position. I think there's a t- tremendous value to have and like with a really, you know, just a great team and the resources that a company can give you to do your reporting. But, you know, there's a lot of room for people like the Ben Thompsons of the world and, you know, the John Gruber of the world and like all those people. There's going to be more of those folks as people kind of realize like, you know, subscription is a very direct <laughs> business model. Like it's, yeah. it's direct with your audience and it, it really lowers the, the bar for people to be able to go out there and do stuff on their own. So I'm excited to see that. Yeah, me, me too. I'm excited also to see just more, I don't want to say celebrity, that's kind of the wrong thing, but the rise of the notoriety, let's say, of, of journalism, mm-hmm. especially in this, you know, now we're, we're in this Trump air, but also this crazy air of the virus and whatever else, and just the need for it and what people are finding. So I'm excited. You you also have a positive outlook. A couple people I've had I do. before are kind of like, oh God, but uh, there's a rising surge in correlation of people I chat with now who are like, no, th- this is good. Like, 
I do. I mean, I think working at places that actually um, understand the business of media, yeah. and, you know, I would, that's like my main thing is like, I've, I feel like I've dodged a lot of bullets in my career so far, just not going to places that then either did complete pivots, laid teams off, yeah. got hit by a uh, private equity takeover, whatever. Um, I would just having some understanding of the f- actual financials and the, the business acumen of wherever mm-hmm. you're going and like, what is the goal here is, is super valuable because um, then you end up not having to deal with, you know, uh, I know a lot of people that just have had to be laid off or whatever. And it, yeah. it sucks. And it's, there's just a lot of media companies that have been struggling to, to adapt. Um, so finding the ones that are doing it well and are kind of thinking ahead, which is what drew me to information. Cause you know, Jessica lesson, our founder was like so early to doing a paywall and uh, she got, you know, laughed at about it when we first launched and now everyone's doing it. So um, yeah, finding the, finding those kind of people in media who kind of think ahead and can kind of see where the winds are going, I think is super important and just aligning yourselves with them. Mm-hmm. So now, Alex, just to round out our convo here, we're going to do a little Mad Lib. Are you familiar? <laughs> okay. I am. Okay. Okay. It had been like freaking years before since I had played it before we started doing this in the end of the podcast. So here we go. So I'll give you the the little phrase and then uh, I'll, re- I'll read back the paragraph after we're done. So the first thing is just what's a catchphrase? You know, my wife always gets on me for using catchphrases that uh, that she doesn't understand. So I should just be able to pull one out of my hat. I know, or, you know, once she's like, that's so obscure. Why are you not just like using that? Um, uh, God, I'm really drawing a blank. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Well, let's come back. Let's come back to that. We could just put it as blank. How about that? I don't know. We'll see what that. Let's try blank. Okay, let's yeah. try blank. Okay. How about a journalist scare phrase? Like what's a scary word you hear? <laughs> Um, correction. Ooh, oh yeah. What about empowering journalism oriented word or a buzzword? An empowering word. I would say like, um, gosh, I'm so bad at this. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> also late on a Friday. So I'm going to give you that. Uh, not that late. Um, I don't know. No, 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 no. How about, uh, I don't know, freedom of the press or something. I don't know. Yeah. Freedom of the press. Okay, we'll, we'll do that. Freedom of the press. Okay. All right. What about an adjective? Tremendous. Ooh. Okay. And then what about a part of a pitch? Views are up 110%. (laughs) All right. Another adjective? Angry. Ooh, angry. And then how about another part of a pitch? Speak to the founder. Mm, mm -hmm. And then how about an amount of time? Nine months. Nine months. And then another adjective? Stupid. Stupid. Yep, yep. And then a noun, just a singular noun. Let's do book. Okay, book, yeah. And what about a topic? Advertising. Okay, almost done here. What about a verb that ends in ing? Reading. Reading. And then a verb? Talk. Talk, okay. Are you ready? I'm going to read it. Oh, gosh. (laughs) Okay. To me, tech journalism is blank. It consists of corrections and freedom of the press on the daily. If a pitch has a tremendous user stat, such as user up, user base is up 110%, I will absolutely respond to it. However, if a pitch has an angry, why don't you speak to the founder? You can expect no reply from me. If nine months goes by and you don't see an email back from me, you can just assume I am not down with it or you had stupid in there. So we'll just say not stupid about it. The best stories always have a book and are usually about advertising. And the best way to reach me is by reading to me, but you can also just talk to me. (laughs) Isn't that great? Yeah. Wow. These are highly accurate. I don't know about yours. It's unofficial advice, but you know, we'll take it. (laughs) (laughs) Alex, thank you for being on with us today. This is really fun. A great way to end a fun. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Coffee with a Journalist featuring Alex Heath from The Information. The goal of our show is to give you an in-depth look into the tech industry's most well-known and coveted journalists, and we hope you found today's episode insightful. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our show on iTunes, Spotify, and everywhere else you enjoy listening to podcasts. We'll see you next week with an all new guest and even more insights. Until then, let's quit bitching about pitching and start great stories.